thanks for having me. I'm Vivens. I'm uh, from Omurava. And I, I believe that we interacted with some of uh, really many talents here. And that there are even people here owning companies and organizations. Um, by very quick, quick, quick one, we are just putting the Africa as a talent marketplace platform. You are all software engineers. Some of you have started to get some projects on Apple, Top Tad. I think a few Rwandans on the Top Tad, but especially Apple and Fiverr, we are trying to build the Pan African model kind of the same model if I would put in the context both either in the technology perspective but also even in the human expertise uh, that we want to be offering to companies and organizations. And I have a simple thing here and I know we have junior engineers here, mid-level software developers, uh, we have also senior developers which I assume there are not many but we, I believe that we even have other people from tech careers in general that are not typically in what I have mentioned. And my talk, 95% is really for aspiring software developers and even junior developers. And talking about junior developers on a global ranking, I'm talking about someone who is into this field between one year and three years of experience, eventually either running and studying. And there is a simple component here, which I believe that in software engineering, it's typical, the jobs are available there. But I was asked to talk about people struggling to find the jobs. And I have just a few tips to share here that I believe we see them either working for our own company, but also even the ones that we see working for multiple employers that we are currently working with. So, apart from people who are doing typical coding, do we have other people here who are under software engineering field, either as quality assurance, as a product designers? Do we have those people in the room? Yes? Yes? Okay, thanks. That, that's what I wanted to know. And I'm not going to delay in telling you more about Murava, but this is an interesting slide. The last time we were here, I think the number has gone very high. So now we are celebrating our three years in operation since we started. And we, we have exceeded 250 companies and organizations that are leveraging Murava to hire and outsource the African workforce. And we got over 1,000 people placed in jobs and projects at the moment. And we recorded over 2,100 jobs and projects. That means those 1,000 those 1, people have already consumed. But we are having over now 13,000 people on Murava platform and ecosystem, consuming various multiple career growth uh, resources and even skills development. So, Let's talk about the gap here. Now, next five years, we are expecting to have over 85 million jobs that might remain unfilled due to the skills that are out of supply. And this is specifically for software development jobs. And by talking about this, this is a call to action to most of us, eventually to start either increasing our skills, encouraging our young brothers and sisters to undertake these tech careers because there are plenty of jobs globally and the gap is still there. That means for people who have skills, good behaviors, good attitudes, the jobs are there for them. And which I think most of the times you will see. For some senior software engineers in this room, when you do great, even you get a lot of projects and the jobs where you eventually miss a lot of efforts even to handle all of them. So for junior aspiring people entering the space, there is really plenty of opportunities, but how do we unlock them? I have a few tips to share. One, if you are a young software developer, have more than one portfolio, either before or after graduation. The simple thing is when we meet in the interview, or once you meet any employer in an interview, what they are going to ask is simple. Of course, they will ask you those things you first go through chat GPT. What are the top questions am I going to be asked as a software engineer, right? 
But the most important question, which will always remain in the minds of the interviewers, is what have you done before? Because the project person A, B, C, D, E, F, they have worked on a difference. If you talk about we bought it a health tech product, we bought it an agri tech product, that's something that we have to recall. And most of the times, it be able to add its impact. This is the most important part. Every time when you have a good portfolio from your skills, now it becomes much easier to really stay in the minds of those people who are interviewing you or those people who want to give you jobs or projects. Whatever you do, this thing where you go to pitch and present, uh, you know, I worked on five different projects. On this one, I did this button. On this one, I fixed the logo. On this one, I have done the sign-up page. Honestly speaking, it's not enough to convince someone to give you the job. Get a full portfolio where at least you can say, this tool was free on me. So that, that's the first thing which we have to put in mind. Number two, uh, we have in Rwanda, not many, but uh, there are many global companies that are trying to deploy multiple skills, challenges, and the hackathons. I think it's good now when you meet some guys in Kigali, they will tell you that I'm working on a multiple data science project on Kago, I'm on Zindi, ETC. So the skills, challenges, and the hackathons are just there either. You are proving your skills, but at the same time, you are building your future reference at the end of the day. And you are proving it to the public that you know it or you don't know it or these are the gaps that you have to face. These are the public that are available for free. Sometimes you will see them on the money, with money, prizes, or even sometimes on the knowledge prizes. Young people here, again, jump slowly from one project or a company to another. Meet someone, I can see you worked for 10 companies in three years. You are 20 years old, or you are even still in the university. So what comes in the mind of an employer is like, what proves that if I give you the job, you are not going to jump quickly after two months or three months. And to most of the senior software engineers in the room, this is a big concern, especially for global companies as well as long as they won't give you a tough project. And you haven't been consistent in one company, maybe one, one year, two years, three years. Most of the times, you are really disqualifying yourself. You think you know things, which is true, but that consistent component or the level of problems you have solved consistently, it now becomes another red flag, and then it kills you immediately in terms of securing a, a good opportunity that you you are just going to get. We are seeing this especially in global companies that we are working with, not our local companies here. Global companies, live coding interviews and the challenges are becoming the key stage in the interview process. And we are sure that most of the times, you guys, if you see that there is a live coding, you are now starting to say, I'm not going to join this interview. Please be, be competent enough and start to consider this because now it is going to prove that you are great at what you are trying to do or that what you are trying to do. So currently, when you look at the job opportunities in the tech sector, it's no longer not competing to this friend of Mamari Tech from uh, which other companies? Daytona, ICP. You are not competing between Rembo, Bank of Kigali, TC. Now, there is a global competition. Rwandan is in this room. You have seen how Nigerian is in this room and it snaps to them. They are consuming most of our jobs in Oakland here. And, and most of the times when a company, maybe from US, wants to hire the Rwandan software engineer and they miss them, they are telling you, please hire the Kenyan is for me, hire Ugandan is for me. So now, get ready to compete globally. This is the case. And it does take jobs. Honestly speaking, they are not local. They are just on a global job market and the market. And the good thing they don't limit most of the times about at the region. Okay, so this is something that you really have to wear the heart to compete for. The last component, which I think we can engage later about, this is the picture. This is what now, after mastering your next GS, not GS, each and everything, your Python. Now, this is the rocket now to 
take you wherever you want. Soft skill is a mastery. And being able to understand, it, first of all, what are soft skills, how I use them. And in a simple term for us, we define our soft skills to be productive skills. We believe these are the skills to help you to deliver what you are supposed to deliver and to grow your professional career path. So this is something that I recommend everyone to consume. Rastri, uh, which I think I talked more about this, navigating the recruitment and the job search processes and the techniques. I will only not focus on many because I have already probably highlighted most of them. But uh, the biggest component most of the times here is when you build your resume, make sure that someone who is going to review it doesn't know you. So how do you position it to ensure that if someone is not looking at you, is not facing you, can easily, easily take you to the next stage of an interview process. And another big component is, which I believe now, to junior software engineers, it is still a gap. Where you have an interview, and you end up even being great. And you know when you are rating in the interview, that's a disqualification. They would pick the interview, but that's the first disqualification. Imagine being red when you are looking for a job. Once you get a job, are you going to be on the time? That's an issue. But something that I have noticed to our senior software engineers in Rwanda now, when they have interviews, they know that they have interviews and they are there on the time. And which is something that I think many junior software engineers can learn. And the last part here among these things, Network is a currency uh, that you need to have. From a friend to a friend, you can learn from one another, you can get a job, etc. So these are really various techniques and tips which I believe that we, you can explore more of them. But those are the three ones that I really wanted to touch more on. So with Murava, we, we have various opportunities now, which I think uh, would be here also to discuss. From junior talent to senior talents, we have multiple opportunities. Either from the skills the challenges we talked about, hackathons, and even apprenticeship programs, and I think jobs which I think bring most of the people on the Morava platform. But to senior talents, we are growing volume of projects. And we wanted to team up with many senior software engineers that believe they can bully the team, they manage it, and they ship a certain product they are going to go in. This is something that uh, we are exploring and we want uh, many people to grab uh, these opportunities as well. And uh, I believe my job was simple and easier. It was to share a few tips and I believe that uh, some of you got uh, some of the takeaways uh, that might really contribute to your career growth. And uh, for questions and the answers I'm still here and we will really get uh, more time to, to, to chat and even learn more about you. And uh, finally, I would conclude by saying that we always like people to be part of a Mulava platform, to be really these people who, are, who have high level of quality in terms of the skills that they are able to supply and to provide to our partner companies and organizations. Uh, thank you guys for paying attention.